Hey, I'm Bashir Salahuddin. And I'm Diallo Riddle. And you're tuned in to Where's the Buzz TV. Where is it? It's here. I'm your co-host, Diallo Riddle. And I'm Bashir Salahuddin. And we're here to talk about the issues affecting the Afro-American community. community. That's right, the things that affect our people yes. today. Okay, first of all, <laughs> you guys... That's not right. <laughs> show, no, I really... I reset the wrong tone. I <laughs> Sorry. I really love the show. Thank um, you very much. That means a lot. Episode three is by far my favorite. And that's yeah. what the... Dude, how many episodes played. you see? I saw the five. Nice. That wow, nice. <laughs> my wife is uh, my wife plays uh, uh, Officer Turner, Turner yes. so I'm sure she'd love hearing that. You know, you loved it so much. Yes, especially because um, it spoke about justification, which is like yep. a rapid Thank you. thing that's affecting a lot of major cities and black families. And just what's the name of the uh, white couple in episode three? Is it Henry and uh, Henry and uh, uh, um, Sarah or something like that? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry to be too Sorry. And. <laughs> And just to see, um, just that talked about, about how it's happening in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I want to know, is justification as rapid in Chicago mm -hmm. as it is in like New York and DC? Um, I'm, I'm familiar with how rapid it is in New York and DC. Um, I think that is absolutely something that when you're in Chicago, people are talking about it and they're concerned about it. They're worried about getting pushed out of the houses. They're mm -hmm. worried about, you know, one thing Chicago does actually, which is really unique, is that we have suburbs that uh, unfortunately, sometimes are more tumultuous, but particularly the South suburbs. We have an episode about that, episode nine, which talks about being from Harvey, uh, because a lot of the, the disaffected people who got pushed out were actually shunted down to the South suburbs. And so you've, there's this economic disparity that happened in Chicago that was sort of been picked up and moved on mass somewhere else as they move other people in. I think it's something that, you know, I, I'm not even sure yet what the 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 answer will be, but it's certainly something that I'm, as I was saying, you know, to, to many people, I'm just now sort of trying to figure out more and more what our place is in terms of the the, the doing work in Chicago that uplifts the community because I think the show is one thing and it's really important because I think the show helps us revise our image and it helps show people that we're super funny and hilarious. Um, but then also there's got to be some on the ground stuff that we're doing when the camera's not on yeah. in Chicago. And I'm, I'm really excited to start doing that. Stuff. And to uh, your brothers, you know, his brother is the star of the show. Yeah, he uh, also has an organization too. He's starting an organization yeah. that's going to promote working in the industry, mm -hmm. but like working behind the scenes. Because like, yeah. there's so many jobs that people never see. Like, of course, you see the actors and you hear about the directors. But, you know, the, from the electrical grips to the... You know, people who you know work the cameras or mm -hmm. DPs, the uh, best speak. boy, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever that job. Still trying to find out what that is. That means. Um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like we, we we feel like if you tell people because when we were shooting in Chicago, mm -hmm. people would come up and they would ask like, "Oh, what does that person do? What does that person do?" And we really are you <laughs> the why you on my block? <laughs> and so, can I get some money for you all shooting on my, the sidewalk out in front of my house? Because I can't go home. Right we, now. we 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 do seek to educate people in terms of like these are the jobs that you may not know mm -hmm. are industry jobs and by the way unionized jobs so yep. like you get paid really well I think some of the people who make um, some of the most stable living I'll say uh, in our industry are the people who work behind the cameras in, in various capacities so his brother's taking the lead and sort of educating people on what those jobs really are mm -hmm. but yeah just to the point about gentrification um, it's definitely mentioned on our show and we handle it with humor and as you see with our show we handle a lot of tough things with humor yeah. because I think that particularly as you know black folk we often need to find ways to, to handle things with humor because otherwise you know you just would be yeah. devastated you laugh to keep from crying yeah. exactly yeah. I really like that because um, you guys really say regular life and mm -hmm. you make it Hilarious! Like Thank you. the whole Jordan fiasco. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I'm not a sneakerhead, and uh, that's not even true. You know, I'm trying to become a sneakerhead. I actually bought recently three pairs of Nikes, so I'm, I'm well, not. Look as, at you, Rockefeller. <laughs> one of our uh, uh, amazing. How many? Couple of bones. Couple of couple bones. bones. I bought, I bought uh, two pairs. Of, you know what it is? I did. I'm gonna be honest. Like my family is working class, and when I was in high school, we didn't get any of those fancy shoes. So I'm sort of now able to buy those shoes, and I'm buying them all now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's a little sad uh, that I'm buying shoes that I wanted. For when all I was those in high nights school. you went to bed with no shoes, but those Air Max, those I got some white and white Air Max that are pretty badass. Yeah, I got some. I got some Jordan Fives. That oh man. But you know, I, even me growing up in Atlanta, uh, I remember there was a store downtown called Walters, and mm -hmm. Walters was like the place all the all the new shoes came out. So people would line up outside of Walters, and anytime you pass. Walters and it was like a line all the way circling around the block you knew like oh it must be the Jordan's day so we've always said like wouldn't it be fun to do an episode where like it's all based around the chaos mm. that happens 
when the new Jordans drop. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And and I and I also like that episode because we treat the sneakerheads almost like zombies from yeah. The Walking Dead. Like it's just like I smell Jordans and they all go running this way. So like it's it's, it's funny. So why did you guys decide to um center this around Reno Town? Uh, <laughs> I love that you pronounced it that way. Uh, one of the, the the actors on the show, Quincy Young, who plays uh, Q, who actually plays the boss uh, at RTO, used to work at Renner Center. He worked there for probably ten years. Mm -hmm. What it is is that we were trying to make a show that was really authentic. We wanted Chicago to speak for itself. So both in front of and behind the camera, you have real Chicagoans. There are people who are just bus drivers who just, you know, we like, you're hilarious, come through this line. You know, there are extras that we gave lines to. We really let the people from the city represent themselves. And so at the core of that is, uh, you know, our friend Q, who worked there for 10 years, really helped us understand that business a lot. But also the other thing about that business is that it requires, uh, with Renner Center, they drop off and they pick up furniture, right? And we love that because we said, oh, that's great. It'll get us all over the city. Because what we really want to do is say it's a workplace comedy, but our set is the entire city of Chicago. It's yeah. the south side, the west side, the north side. It's all the sides. And that business allows us to kind of go everywhere and to meet everybody. So we really thought it was a great way. Because the show, in some ways, is a love letter to the city of Chicago, the city that I love, that I grew up in. And the rent center allows, the rent-to-own, rather, allows us to, like, go around. But, it, it, but it, really is, it really is centered in the south side. Mm -hmm. Like, we, this man, to his credit, he, because he grew up on the south side, there was one point where like we were going over locations. Yep. And he's like, hey, you know, I think we're shooting a little bit too much of the west side yeah. for the south side. Like that's the degree of authenticity. Yeah, we could shoot the west side for the west side. That's the north side for the before. north side. Yeah. Um, obviously, when you when you. By know, the way, even as a person who didn't grow up there, I would say the west side doesn't look exactly like the south side. No, like when you shoot on the south side, it, it looks it looks different. Yeah, but even within the south side, there are different neighborhoods. Yeah, and it's different, and it's actually a fine point because. It's really, 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 really important to me that we don't elevate any part of Chicago above any other part of Chicago. For me, South Side is a state of mind. Our characters go on the North Side, they go on the West Side, they have fun in all these places, they have fun downtown. They just bring a South Side mentality with them. But we're certainly not saying, and I don't want anybody, and I think when people watch the show, they'll see we uplift the whole city. There's no sense of like, well, the South Side is better than me. I'm sure there are people who think that, but we don't do that on our show because I, my mother's from the West Side. I mean, we just love the whole city of Chicago. South Side is where I'm from, so that's our starting point. And I want you guys to speak on like the importance of showing this because like outside of this and the shy, there's mm -hmm. really not other TV shows I can think of that. Well, you have all the Dick Wolf shows, but those are all like you know very difficult like procedural. There's Chicago, a fire over there. Chicago and, Fire, Chicago Law, <laughs> Chicago Law Fire. But like I'm, I'm talking about a Chicago space fire thing law. mostly on the black community. Yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah. I feel like the the last time we saw that was Family Matters. Yeah. Well, wait, what was the other one? Um, well, Family Matters was in the... That's right, that was Chicago. That was right? Chicago. And then The Shy. Yeah. And yeah. It's a, but, you know, Us in The Shy is like a nice one-two punch. I mean, we're a comedy. We love being a comedy. We're a hard comedy. It's really important for us to be a comedy. We really wanted to make a show uh, that, you know, Dia and I will often joke that black people have poignant lives. So sometimes when it's, we come home, it's fun not to watch poignant things on television. And I know I have friends who spend all the time watching like Family Guy and The Simpsons and Rick and Morty and whatever. They just love comedies. And so... With us in the shot, you get a nice one-two punch. They are certainly a great drama, and they deal with a lot of issues, and we also deal with issues. In and we love Lena. Like we love think, Lena, like yeah. what Lena's doing over there is fantastic. It's almost like a companion thing. And I think what's cool is that, like nowadays, you live in a world where, like, you can have two shows yeah. with black people in Chicago, and they don't have to be compared. Yeah, you know what I mean. Totally. They they can be totally different. Because it's her to, voice and her yeah. show and her vision and ours. And our voice is always going to be like you know. We like to, we're just, we're just clowns. We're right? goof-ass clowns. I, mean, I, 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 I was trying to say, she's we, we can dress, it, we can dress it up as much as we want, but, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Lena and uh, Ava, and, and there are a lot of people are going to do what they, and, like, we're going to, we're just going to make something silly. Yeah. And it's, you know, <laughs> it's a good balance. Exactly. So what do you guys hope that this show will provide for people that aren't from Chicago or have never experienced Chicago for themselves? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you very much. I think this show will help Good us question. begin to reshape the narrative, particularly around the South Side. You know, Chicago, to some degree, is interesting because it's known as a super funny city. But the people that um, get that reputation are on the North Side. It's the Blues Brothers. It's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's The Breakfast Club. You know, the actual movie, The Breakfast Club. When you think about comedy, the South Side is not in conversation. Yes, the South Side is a rich comedy tradition from Robin Harris to Bernie Mac, all these wonderful comedy clubs. And so hopefully we can reshape the narrative to America and America can go, hey, wait a second, the South Side is hilarious. You know, the West Side is hilarious. 
Black Chicago, which is what I call it sometimes shorthand, Black Chicago, is hilarious. And now when we think of Chicago, we won't just think about the things we see from the news or the things we hear from sometimes the politicians will denigrate the city. We'll think about Chicago as this place. We saw this hilarious episode about people trying to buy Jordans or somebody trying to sell popcorn in front of a movie theater and not get caught. You know, whatever that is, because everybody in Chicago has a side hustle. It don't even matter how good the job is, people got side hustles. And so hopefully that's our hope for the show. <laughs> the Obamas and, 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 might even have a side hustle. They got about in, 15 side hustles. Still, in High Park. Exactly. Yeah. They just got a, uh, they got a Netflix thing. They got oh, a whole see, lot of stuff. They, 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 they got, got all kinds of hustles. They got on. big side hustles. Yeah, they got big, big, big ventures. <laughs> so hopefully. One and by the way, we'll Obama, do, hilarious. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we, we wrote for him while we were still at Fallon, like, uh, you know, the man needed no coaching on comedic timing, and that's yeah, got it. probably due to his South Side roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll re hopefully we'll reshape the narrative. Hopefully we'll help Chicago see itself in a better light. Really, hopefully, the people from Chicago will start to even more so champion those positive things and those things that, that uplift all of us. And then also, you know, outside of the city, again, we can hope to reshape the narrative. And hopefully have a lot of fun and be around for a very long time. Yeah. And last question. Um, while filming in Chicago, what is the funniest side hustle that you guys encountered? That's really good, man. That's a great question. It's just so many because if you go to any, a lot of corners, there's always kids selling like candy and stuff. You know, one of my favorite side hustles actually was this kid who sold homemade peanut butter cookies. And <laughs> they were. And you're like, how are they? And he's they like, really, I have a peanut allergy. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you even know these, how do you even know these are good? They were really, I, I love them. They're really good. And I, I think I bought too many of them because he was even a little concerned because I bought so many. <laughs> he was um, like, I can't sell to you, though. Yeah, he would, he would literally <laughs> I'm go cutting you off. He would go to the store. He's like, hey, hey, man, you eating me out of uh, my product, bro. <laughs> I was like, I need some of them cookies, my man. But yeah, he would go store to store selling them. And I think he was like 16 or 17. And I got to tell you, the reason I love that hustle, and I think it goes to our show, is because he ain't hurt nobody. He's 17? He's about 16. He's a young kid. He's like a high school kid. And he ain't hurt nobody. And I love that he had made a decision to have an entrepreneurial interest. That also was something positive and didn't, you know, bring, you know, some some sadness, Chaos. some misery to somebody. Yeah. So I, I love something. But it brought you a little sadness. I saw you the next. Well, time. I had a sugar <laughs> cone. I had a lot of. He crashed pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I got his number too. That's really. He's, he's not trying to talk to me. <laughs> you texted him. Yeah. You're like, why are you ghost to me? I said, <laughs> I want them cookies. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> he ain't even back yet. It's all good. I'm gonna find him though. <laughs>